put this towel on him because we're doing the skin fade and I like to wipe the razor off with the towel. So I just use the towel on his neck instead of like a neck strip. Okay. I'm gonna do the hard part first because I just feel like I get it cleaner when I do it first. His cowlick whorl area is right here, so I part right from that whorl over and try to just make a very, very clean part. I used to try to start the hard part with a trimmer, but I don't like that because it tends to make it a little too wide. I like to do my hard parts where it's just enough that it's there, but if for some reason he wants to grow it out or whatever, it won't look weird. I like to use gel for the hard part because I can see through it. Okay, I'm gonna put clean razor in there and grab my comb right where the part is. I'm just gonna wiggle the straight razor just enough to cut in the part. So there it is, hard part. And now I'm just gonna use this trimmer to make my skin line. I like to hold it at an angle so I can just go like this. And then just get all this hair down the stubble. I do one side first. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side and then meet in the back. When I first started doing this, I tried to go all the way around the head and I always found that it would end up like crooked on one side. So I've learned that do one side, the other side, and then the, the back is better tends to make it a lot cleaner and the way I want it. Okay, good. And now I'm gonna shave it. Um, some people, and I have an electric shaver, but some people like to just use that instead of the straight razor because it's quicker and everything. But I like to use this razor and then maybe at the end clean up any little imperfections. I just find that it works easier for me and it's easier to get the line out. If I use the electric razor and just buzz all this it's just in my experience it's really hard to get the skin line to go away so i like to do it this way and i just pull the skin taut as far as the pressure you put on the razor you just you don't want to go too light because you'll nick him and you don't want to go too hard because you'll nick him and that just takes time to get the feel of how hard or how soft to push down but even if you're really good, occasionally you may nick somebody, it happens. But obviously the goal is not to do that. This is an aftershave from Canada. It's called Embargo. I really like this one. It's got a very old school kind of bourbon smell to it. It's almost like putting Jack Daniels on somebody, but I like it. Let's wipe away this. Now I'm just gonna wipe everything else off with a hot towel. This towel's really hot, so I like to, what I've learned to do, or what I was taught to do, is just to touch it against your wrists or elbows. If it's hot on your elbows, it's too hot to put on their scalp. Just wave it off. Get also this orange colored gel off. I'm gonna use the talc to just get the moisture off the scalp so the clippers don't stick. Perfect. Okay. Now while his hair's still wet, I'm just gonna cut the top some. Um, and then we'll do some fading, and then I'll dry and do the rest dry. So this is, uh, I'm gonna use this flat topper to cut the top and make it real square. 
the thing is with this, it's designed for flat tops, but I hardly ever use it to do flat tops. But I like to use it for stuff like this, because it just makes cutting the top faster and easier. And it's easy to get the square shape using this. But I'm just getting everything evened up. I'm not making it too boxy. He's got really straight hair, so I don't want to take it too short because he'll stick straight up. And I'll just cross check it real quick. Good. Good. Cool. Put in some of this grooming spray here. We have a bunch of different ones. I just grabbed this one because it was the one on my station. Works good. And the purpose behind putting the spray in before you blow dry is so that as I blow dry, it keeps the hair in the shape that I'm trying to create. Use this brush now. In this part area, I'm gonna slow the blow dryer down. And just comb this down with a comb, get it dry. I have it on high heat and I'm wiggling the blow dryer around so that way it doesn't burn his scalp. I'm trying to get it dry as quick as possible, but I'm not holding it in one place the whole time. I don't want to hurt the guy. Swiggling it around reduces the chance of that happening. I'm just going to clean up this area here. I'm trying to be aware like, I'm not going flush with this scalp. I'm just kind of holding it up and getting what's sticking out. So I want to keep some weight at that parted area there. Just cleaning up this heavy line. Same over here in the corner. Okay, I'm gonna use some of these metal guards. This is a one and a half. I'm just gonna go like this and then work down. And then right up here, it's a little dark, so, but I'm just working the corner because I don't want to go right into it and mess up the weight that I want to keep lightly grazing it and I'm gonna work my way around and then back here on the back of his head I tend to have to the hair is more dense and compact in right here in this area so it's easier to blend this back here you really have to get in there and you may even have to go a bit shorter than whatever guard you used over here to make it match the way the rest of this fade looks um, hopefully I don't have to do that but we'll see I'm just getting it with the corner now. I'm trying to go against the growth, so this hair is going this direction. I want to get it the opposite way. This is a texturizing blade that's missing. There's some teeth that aren't there. I like using this one on the sides for the fade portion because it makes it easier to chip away at these dark areas. It blends it a little bit more efficiently than if I did it with a regular 1A guard. You can also use it on the top of people's heads to texturize hair, but lately I've been using it to blend fades because it just makes it a little faster in my experience. And I like the blade. Get back here. That looks pretty good. So one now, and then use the corners, and chip away at this. Just keep going. I can go flush with it because, like I said, it'll get more aggressive in the back to make it match the sides. Mm -hmm. 
back to the corner to get the rest of this. And then I'll probably use another clipper just to clean up the rest, but you see what I'm getting at. And I'm still working top down. The only line I set was that initial skin line. And that's just how I like to do my skin fades. There's people that set several lines or they work from the bottom where the skin is and go up. That's fine. This is just the way I like to do it. I don't like to set lines because, you know, then you have to fight to get them out. I like this way that I was shown. Still doing all right, Chris. Good. Okay. We're getting closer and closer to the very bottom. This is a three aught. Just chip away at this line. And I'm not going as high as I was before. It's just a little bit lower, a little bit lower, a little bit lower. And you can see it's starting to disappear. Just surely, slowly, surely, it's going away. So you can see it's like still a line there, but we're almost out. And then I'm going to use this as a five zero. And you should get it almost completely gone, and then I'll use the electric shaver to zap the line out. Okay, so you can still see a tiny bit of the line there. That's when I'll use this electric shaver. And I just kind of lightly graze it with this, and it makes it out go away. You can also use it to manipulate the fade. If there's an area, like there's a little dark spot there, you can lightly just tap it. It'll soften it up blend everything a little nicer. And the barber has showed me this. He's a local guy. His name's Tommy Stevens. So if he gets to see this, Tommy Stevens showed me how to do this. I did not learn it on my own. And I feel like he deserves credit for that, but he's really good at fading. When he showed me how to do this, it blew me away. And then I started trying to incorporate it into what I do. still see a little bit of that line, but you can see it's starting to make everything blend real nice into the skin. And also taught me that this tool can be used for more than just getting the hair down to nothing. You can use it a lot of different ways. Still a little bit back there. So I'm gonna blend this some more on the sides with these blending shears. Any kind of shear over comb, I'm just trying to hold the bottom blade still, even though it's this different type of scissor. And just chip away at this. I'm also gonna take some weight out of the top so his hair is easier to comb. Because again, it's very coarse, straight hair. Good. See, even combing it already, it's got that boxy square shape, just has a part in it, which is what you want. I'm gonna use these now. These are longer but less aggressive, so I'm gonna use these. Same deal. I'm just gonna go through and create a little movement, but also get rid of excess bulk so it'll stay the way he wants it. Good. It's actually pretty good already. Blow all the hair out of here. Okay. Now, I'm gonna freehand the sides and then I'll probably have to clip her over comb more of that because there's a big ridge there. Modified OA on the sides. So I'm just gonna look at it straight ahead and get these hairs that are sticking out. This is the blade I like to use to freehand, but you can't, you don't want to put it on somebody's scalp. You can't do that, it'll hurt them. We talked about that in the other video. But it's really good for this type of stuff. I'm also 
we're gonna get some of these like wild hairs. Good. Now let's clean up the rest of this. Instead of mostly going across, I'm gonna go up. So that way it, it builds the weight. So I'm just trying to lightly get this because for the most part, it's where I want it. I just want to clean this up a little more. Good. So you see with no product in it, it's already got a nice boxy square shape, which is a good thing. That means it should look nice without product, whether, I mean, it's always great when a client wants to use product. I always feel like it makes the haircut look a little more put together, but the goal is always just to make it look good, even if there was nothing in it. I'm gonna use this one more time just to soften these dark areas, but we're pretty much there. Like I said, this blade's not getting all the hair. It's just lightly chipping away because it's missing teeth. It's a texturizing blade. But I have found for blending fades, it does make that transition area softer, which is good. So I just want to soften it up. I want to get rid of it. Just try to make it look like a nice, smooth transition. And with hair his, this dark, that's the hardest part, really. It's just softening this up enough that it doesn't look really really stark sometimes certain haircuts it actually looks kind of cool to have it real dark i mean i've had um some very old timey kind of 30s 40s style cuts you know they didn't blend them particularly great but in a way the aesthetic of that can be cool just depends on the haircut and then of course the person and their overall appearance because I do think a lot of these haircuts, you know, the better ones are the ones that I take pictures of, the ones I like to do tend to fit the person real well. Let's use this a little more. All right, let me get your eyebrows too. I usually do this with everybody. Most people don't seem to mind, but you know, people get Eyebrows are long. Just like to get that with a guard or sometimes with the scissors. Just to get these a little. There you go. It's just a little something. Most people tend to appreciate that. Same with like getting in the ears or anything like that. Try to get all this hair off of him. And then check behind the ears too to make sure there's no hair. That's the easiest place to, to miss something on a skin fade is that little spot behind the ears. There's a little line here. Last minute touch up. Okay. Now I'm gonna put some stuff in there. I'm gonna mix these two together. This is a clay and a paste. The clay is like a putty, so it's like pretty strong. Basically what I'm gonna do is, I want something strong in his hair, but I just wanna knock it down a touch. So I'm gonna put the clay with this paste, which is also a mat, and just mix them together a little bit. I'd say it's like 60-40. start in the back make my way forward and just try to get a little bit of the product in every piece of hair Big, big, big pick here. Just to get everything up and the product through the hair. And I got this from, I was watching it on Instagram. There's these barbers from Russia called, I don't 
hope I don't butcher the name of their shop. It's like D-I-E Apothic, like D-Apothic, but I thought it was really cool and I could see like all kinds of cool ways to use it. So I asked if I could buy one, they could send it to me and they said yes. So I've been using this big ass pick last couple of months. Put a little of this on here. And now I'm just gonna use the normal size to comb it the way I want it to be. Get these little hairs out of the way. The rest of it's easy. And I'm not like smashing his hair down with this. I'm just smoothing it out and following with the other hand. Try to keep the hair. I just want to use a little more in the front here. And when I'm styling this, the goal is just to style it so that no matter what side of his head you're on, it looks good. So it doesn't matter what the part inside, the other side, 360, it should all look where it, like it needs, it is where it needs to be. Just pour it down. Okay, let me just get that. A couple little things sticking out. Good. Good. Then just make sure this is tight in the corner here. I don't like to just block stuff off if I have to get real tight in here. I'd rather taper it in. I think it looks better, grows in natural. Just right here in this corner. Okay. All right, man, let me show you this here. Good. Still got good height and stuff. So we're all good. Thanks for letting me oh, make a video. Sure. I know, that's probably like, so whoa. Oh, my Soviet job didn't kill the video. Yeah, no. <laughs> oh, wait, let me just real quick. This little dark spot here. Okay, cool, man. You're all set. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool, set you up here.